what we're doing in, in a post-COVID is what we're, our people are coming in and some of them are still in a closed down mentality. Some of them are emotionally or spiritually spent and they didn't come back to church to volunteer. We need them to volunteer. So we've been talking about what can we do, what we need to be. We, we need to be proactive, we need to be positive, we need to create a team. Uh, if we address things, we address it in a healthy fashion. Um, I'm, I'm going to talk a little bit about some expectations for a moment while I'm, and motivating volunteers. Let me take, I'm, I'm going to spend a lot of time on this, but I wanted to touch expectations that we have. Uh, pastors and leaders, let me tell you, people in here, people in here, you're high commitment people. You're high commitment people. And what you typically do, high commitment people think everybody is high commitment people. And uh, uh, we are expecting high commitment from others. Not everybody is high commitment. There are people who are high maintenance. You know what I'm talking about? There's a difference. Okay. So what should we expect? If, you, if you're expecting and, and you're, you're already experiencing it, the same thing true in my church, that people are going to come back and pick up right where they left off, it's not going to happen. Now, Tuckman, uh, and he has, a, he has a, a model here that I've used before and I, I've taught before called forming, storming, norming, and performing. And, and it, you enter here, you enter here, you go up and over and here. Now where we want to be, let me just tell you, where we want to be is we want to be here working as one. That's performing. Before you're performing as one, uh, you're working with each other. That He would call that norming. You're working as one, but you're having to uh, working with each other, okay? We're, we're gathering back to a lot of degree at this forming, learning about each other. A lot has happened to people in two years. There's, there's a story. There's, there's things that have happened. What he is saying here is that you come in, we think we're going to operate here, but we may have to start here. And he says you come into forming, you're always, you always go through a storming, challenging each other okay it's not uncommon when you're building a team it's not uncommon for there uh, to be this storming season you see this frequently uh, with sports teams they'll draft people in and they'll bring people on their sports team and they're saying oh wow we put together these key players and then you'll hear later on one of the players is not satisfied, he doesn't like it, wants to be transferred to another team, doesn't like the coach, think this is unfair, thinks he's not getting enough. You, you, know, you, you know what I'm talking about? That's, they're into the storming time. It happens in the corporate world, okay? You bring people in and you hire, you hire some new employees and you say now, that you know we were really we, we were being overworked and we were not able to uh, operate our performance at our high, at our highest capacity and you bring a couple new employees in and it's not long somebody said well how come they get to do it how come they're doing it? They're, they're trying to take my job away they're just trying to show off and they're just how come they get the new and and you bring them in and you want to be over here and you go through some office politics, you go through some conflict, you go through some storming time. Are you with me? Does this, is this making sense? This happens in any organization. You have to move through the storming to get to norming. To get to the norming, this is where you want to be. I only share this with you for the expectation as people come in some of the people coming in may be more work than they are benefit to us. Get ready for that. Some of your volunteers coming back, they could be more work than they are benefit initially. If you're not willing to walk with them through that, 
You will never get them here, and you'll never get them down here. You have to be, it happens in sports teams, it happens in corporate organizations, it happens in the church. So I just wanted to make that, that observation. I'm gonna go ahead and move on. Let's talk about questions for assessment of organization. And I'm gonna put this up real quickly because I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on this, but I, 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 wanna, I wanna put this up for us. When, the, when they come in, when they come in, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna quickly go down this because I'm gonna visit this in just a minute. I'm gonna visit this again in a minute. The why question is our mission. Why are we doing what we're doing? The answer to the why question cannot be because Pastor Aris told us to. Why do we want you to start a cell group? Well, Pastor Aris tells us that's what they that's what they do. Why why do you want me to give an offering? Because Pastor Aris Aris tells us that's what we got to do. Now we're going to do, we're going to do what he, that's not a big enough reason. That's not a big enough reason. That's not a big enough reason to come back to church for some. How we behave, that's our core values. I'm going to visit this. Our core values. What we do is the purpose of the church. What do we do? There are five purposes of the church the New Testament has given us them. Okay, how do we succeed? That's our strategy. This is where we're going to do a lot of things differently post-COVID than we did pre-COVID. We're just, we're, we're, we're going to have to do that, okay? It's just, it's just the reality. Uh, it's just something, things are different right now. And even this week, they relaxed some regulations, okay? Remember, this Sunday, pastor is going to be thinking, we're past it. Some of you are saying, well, presently I think we'll still abide by it to make people comfortable. And some people are still in the past that they, they haven't caught up to the last relaxing of regulation. They're living in the past, you're in the present, pastors of the future. Understand that. The next thing is what is important right now? Your goals change. This is, this is something I want you to, to be aware of. Your goals are changing. You're, you need to have some goals right now. Okay? And, and the goal has to be something that we're working towards. Uh, for example, do we have, if, if we have a church of 300 and we have 60 volunteers, that tells me we have 20% participation. Could we get to 30% by the end of this year? Our goal is to increase that by 10% by the end of the end of this year. That's a goal. We need to think about what our goals are. Our goals is to get our cell group ministry going again. I don't know about you. It took us. We were we opened church, but we we didn't see any movement in cell ministry, any any interest for another year. It took a year after we started having church for people to begin to to, to get comfortable with that again. Uh, that that was a lot longer than what I thought it would take, but that's what happened to us in the United States. At least in my church, I'm just I'm giving you something to compare to, okay? But here's here's what I want you to focus on. What must we do right now? That's implementation. What do we do right now? Uh, I want to try to give you some right now things, okay? Let's talk. What can we do right now uh, to motivate our our volunteers? Number one. Make sure your influence is always a pull and not a push. Make sure your, your influence is a pull and not a push. Are you familiar with the concept of pull versus push leadership? Any 
anyone familiar with that? You ever heard that before? There's actually leadership styles, and they classify them as a pull leadership or a push leadership. Uh, uh, all of us know what a push feels like. A push. And you know what? None of us like it. There, no one likes a, excuse me, brothers, a push. There's something obtrusive and offensive about that, isn't it? But a pull leadership is a leadership style that beckons you and pulls you out. It has gravitational pull. Gravitational pull. It makes you want to. Okay? It, it, make, it makes you want to. It, it inspires you. Jesus was a pool leader. Jesus was in the business of pooling people. He, 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 didn't, he didn't begin his ministry and said, blasted are the mean. No, what was his saying? Blessed. Blessed. Your life will be better. Bless. Your life will be better if you'll do that. He, he had a pool leadership to him. If we want to get people back into volunteering, we need, we need to pull them in and not push them. We, we don't go to them. Hey, I just want to know, what's wrong with you? How come you're not back at church? There has to be some kind of hidden sin. Uh, uh, and uh, do you have the mark of the beast on you or something? Or why isn't it you're, you're not back volunteering at church? You know, they, they, don't want to, they don't want to feel the guilt. No one does. So Self-included. Okay? But that they're looking to be pulled back in, okay? Instead of me saying, hey, uh, man, we've been missing you and you're needed around here. And man, we're, we're, all, we're all working hard. And, and it's, it's tough now. And uh, y'all gotta, gotta pray about it, you know? Uh, uh, you, you, you feel how I'm kind of talking down? Do you, you feel that talk down too? You know what I'm talking about? That feels like a, a, a push, okay? What if I approach my brother and say, man, I'll tell you what, we miss you here. Your gift, your gift is so needed here. I remember prior to COVID and the people that were in your class always felt encouraged. You have, you just have a gift of lifting people up, and you, you were always so attentive. And I, I remember that. I never had a conversation with you that you, you didn't always bring up somebody else's need and somebody else's cares. You have such a good heart for people. I just want you to know, your gift is. Your gift is missed here. <laughs> what does you think he wants to do? Huh? Huh? Did I just make him want to be a part of you? That is a that's a pull. Make sure your leadership stops. This is an example of, of, of a pull versus a push. A push is you're telling, instructing, you're giving advice, and you're offering guidance. But a pool leadership is you're listening, you're asking questions, you're paraphrasing, you're summarizing, and you'll notice the further down you go, the more this downgrades. The further you go down, the more this downgrades. Our style ought to be a pull and not a Push. What do we call this thing right here? A pulpit. There's our job description. We're to pull them out of the pit. There it is. We don't call this a push pit. 
<laughs> right? It's the, this is not a push pit. This is a what? Pull a pull pit. We're in the business of pulling people out of the pit. Yeah. When you come, there's somebody that's broken and hurting and desperate and confused. And they may see you and hear from you before they ever hear from pastor. Pull them out of the pit. Pull them out of the pit. Make sure your leadership style is a pull and not a push. Okay? Let's go on. Do extras. Do extras. Right now, this is the time to do extras. This is the time to just do extras. I have assigned... Uh, I have assigned our pastoral staff right now that they are to make, and I'm going to give you an assignment, okay? I'm going to give you an assignment in a minute. Okay, get ready. I gave another church this assignment. And, and this is still in place today. During COVID, when we, could, we couldn't have services, we were just calling and checking on people and et cetera. What could we do? We couldn't meet in person, but we could check on you and call on you and pray with you on the phone. Post-COVID, we do it to this day. We're back in services. Every one of my pastors, you have to do 25 calls, cards, or contacts a week. A call is I call. How are you doing? You doing all right? You feeling all right? Everything going well? Just calling to check on you. A call or a handwritten card that you open up in the mail. We're praying for you. You were on my mind today. Or a contact. I see you in the hallway. I see you at work. I see you in the neighborhood. We have a face and a contact. A contact with each other. Okay? 25 a week. Call card or contact. Now the key to that, the key to that is you can't ask them for anything. Because if I if if I call you up and say, oh, hey, I would just call you to check and see how you're doing, see how you're feeling, everything all right? You, you, the, the kids are all right, the family's all right. Well, while I've got you on the phone, uh, uh, we're doing something over here Thursday night at the church, and I need you to come help us set up chairs, and I need you to bake some brownies and bring it over. <laughs> the real reason I called, she knows, is I wasn't called to check on her. I called to ask her for something. Right? Yeah. So a, a true care call, you never ask for anything. You can never ask for anything. If you ask for something, it's not care. It's request. <laughs> okay? Here's what I want to do. I want to give you an assignment. I gave this to a church last week. I want every one of us, every one of us, five, say five. 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 Five care contacts a week. Five. A card, a call, or a contact. Your whole purpose is to encourage them. You don't ask them for anything. All you do is say, I just had you on my mind, and I just want you to know. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Is there anything else they're going to ask you that? Because they don't really believe that's why you call. They're going to really believe. Let's get to the real no. Did the pastor ask you? No. Are you sure? Yeah. I just want to call. I want you to call. We care. Wow. You just brought value to you. Five a week. Five a week. Five a week. How many are there here? How, how, how many people do we have? 50 people here from 50? 50? Five a week. Five times five is one. How many care contacts are we going to do a week? Among all of us, five. How many is that? That's, that's how many? How many? 250. Every week? A thousand a month? A thousand 
I'm not. But how, how do we know that you and you and you are not calling the same person? We don't. Well, shouldn't we be writing this down? No, we're not going to write it down. Shouldn't we be logging? No, let's don't, let's don't make it work. What if? What if she got a call from you and you and you? Do you think that's going to upset her? No, that's going to make her feel more valued. More valued. Yeah. 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 If, if, if one person comes up and says, I think you're a good looking man, well, that's not. If three people say, You say, Wow, I'm a good looking man. Yeah. yeah, I always thought so. I'm a, my wife doesn't appreciate it. She doesn't know what she has. You, know? you begin to believe in yourself, don't you? Huh? <laughs> yeah. Let's encourage people back then. Okay? Can we all, can we do five calls? Yes, we can. Pastor, that's 250 a week. That's a thousand a month. That's going to just begin to, for the people that are burned out and discouraged, that's 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 life support for them. That's life support. Here it is. When morale is poor, the leader does everything. When morale is low, the leader does the productive things. When morale is moderate, the leader does the difficult things. When morale is high, the leader does the little things. You know what we're doing? We're functioning in a high morale mentality when we really have a poor morale and a low morale reality. This is our reality here. This is, this is where we left the church three years ago. Three years ago we were here, right, Pastor? We're here, but we came back and we think here. We think the high morale is... is uh, we all expected the church to be full the first Sunday we opened. And I walked out there and I remember being behind the stage with my Bible. Oh, God, I hope... I hope, I hope, I hope the church is at least half full. I believe God this apple. I remember when it was full, but I'll take half full today. And I walked out there and there's 50 people out there. Wow. Wow. I felt it. I felt it. We have to, we have to encourage people. We have to encourage people back to life. Okay. Rarely use the word but. And frequently use the word still. What do you mean by that? I want to change your thinking. I want to change your thinking. We're using the word but. Well, we would start life groups, but people won't come. We would get youth ministry going, but we don't have enough volunteers. We would, we would, we'd get young adult ministry going, but young adults don't seem to have any interest in it. Yeah. We, we'd have training, but people won't come out yet. That's what we, that's what we've been doing for, for three years, okay? I want you to replace the word but with the word still. Instead of saying we get cell groups going but people won't come, here's what you say. Our cell groups are not operating still, I believe, is what God wants us to do. Young adults, I'm not sure if they're interested still. We need to get something going for young adults. Youth, 
Youth are out of the habit of coming to youth group still. We cannot miss ministering to that generation. Get rid of the word but and replace it with the word still. What am I inviting us to do? Think different. Get back on mission. Get back on mission of what God has called us to do and what God has called us to become. See the big in the little. Okay? Right now, you're going to have to see the big in every little because everything's little right now. There was a time, let me remind you, prior to COVID, Pastor, this was a this was an incentive to get people to church. You better come out. It's gonna be it's gonna be great. In fact, I would I would advise you to get there early. This is pre-COVID, get there early because every seat will be taken. There'll be standing room only. It will be a full house. And it's going to be incredible. If I told you three and a half, four years ago, we were going to do something, and there would be standing room only, it was going to be packed. You'd say, I'm going to get there early. I'm going to be there. Okay? Now, if I announce today in church, this Sunday is...